What's good guys? So in this video, we are going to talk about ways that you can build just about any kind of app using existing no-code technologies. And the apps we're going to be looking at today come from Bubble itself. And this is a gallery here. This is actually a gallery or a showcase of no-code apps built on Bubble. And the reason I kind of want to talk about all this is that First, there are all kinds of apps here. We're talking about apps in all kinds of different niches that solve all kinds of different problems and that are designed and built using different ways. And so this means that regardless what kind of app you're, you're interested in building or you want to go out and build or you're building already, uh, the stuff we're going to talk about in this video, the kind of apps we're going to be discussing is going to be valuable to you. The second reason I want to talk about these kind of apps is that the reason Bubble is showcasing these apps is because these apps are valuable. And not only that, they're also very, very profitable. You see, Bubble is not going to go out and showcase apps that add little or no value uh, to people's lives. Whereas these kind of apps, they are solving real problems in all kinds of different niches. And so I have here a diagram here. This is a diagram that I'm sure you have seen before. This is our MVP 0.000001 diagram, meaning that MVP stands for minimal viable product. This is kind of the, the core. This is the version, the, the initial version before anything else. This is what you got to build to test the market, to test that you know people are interested in what you're selling. Because the most important thing here, guys, is that our problems, you know, the problems we're trying to solve with no code, with Bubble, with AppGyver, are not technical in nature, okay? They are business in nature, okay? Because the reason for that is no code solves, you know, 90% of your technical challenges. You still have to, you know, code the app, align it correctly, understand how these tools work. Uh, you have to understand, you know, best practices, you know, stuff like that, stuff that I already covered in other videos. But 90% of your technical challenges, technical problems, technical issues are solved with no code. And that is the reason why no code exists. And therefore, the problem you're facing right now is business. And that is why we have this MVP. That is why we have this diagram. That is why we're looking at ways of architecting this and making sure that what we're doing has actual value. is going to be in demand by people because... You know, if you build the most amazing app in the world, the greatest app in the world, but nobody really needs it, it's not solving a real problem, it's not solving a pressing problem, it doesn't matter. You can have the best app in the world, people are not going to be using it. So we have this diagram, and now what we want to do is we want to go through each of these apps and kind of, you know, brainstorm um, how would we go out and actually build this app, Okay. So, for instance, we have this out karma crowdfunding platform. And so if we open this up, uh, let's take a quick look and let's you know, try to kind of reverse engineer, deconstruct this app and see how would we build this app ourselves. So it says here, the easiest way to improve your financial karma. Karma means you get what you deserve. So the more you give, the more you receive. OK, so subscribe to a monthly donations plan monthly commitment of helping others to make their dreams come true will boost your financial karma. And so that is kind of what we have. We have a little helper, a uh, cheerful giver. We have these various tiers here, right? And we have contributors. Okay, Vo vote for handpicked fundraisers from real people. You can explore fundraisers. So the first thing we have to ask ourselves is what exactly is the purpose of this app? What is it trying to do? How is it going to make my life better? How is it going to make me richer? How is it going to make me healthier? How is it going to, you know, add some value to my life? And that is kind of what you want to think about, right? And so you can click on how it works and you can kind of learn more about it, right? And so it's saying here, raising funds and making contributions. So right away, I'm beginning to think this is some kind of an app, kind of like uh, GoFundMe or uh, one of these other uh, funding uh, places where you can create a new fundraiser and people will, you know, raise funds for you, right? So that is kind of what you want to be thinking about. So if you go back here, I have an idea of how you would structure, right? So you, when we go back to this diagram, 
on the mission statement you know the 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 mission statement would be something like you know you know create fundraisers for people that need funds the most something like that right and then the views well you're going to have this kind of main view here right this home page with this list view and this uh, repeating group uh another repeating kind of uh repeating list here uh, repeating items then you have these things here where you know you can kind of uh subscribe to a monthly donations plan that kind of thing but the key here is that if you go to how it works right it's telling you that you can you can do one or you know the other thing so either this uh this action here or this action right so you can click here you can become a contributor that is all it is so if i click on start a fundraiser it's gonna go in here i can sign up as you know what are we you know using one of these accounts and i can define the fundraiser so that means that for the model here we're gonna have two models here well actually one model just a fundraiser that is kind of the main thing everything revolves around that obviously we're gonna have users we're gonna have a bunch of views uh we're gonna have three views that i can think of right now right this is one view this is another view and then you kind of have the main view okay this this main home page view of course uh, you have this karma board, you have all these other pages, but we're not going to be covering that, right? The key here is you want to figure out, right? This is number one. So I'm going to come in here and I want to show you, right? This is number one, okay? Then you want to quickly figure out the model, right? What does this thing revolve around? Is it, you know, listings? Is it fundraisers? Is it, you know, jobs? You want to figure out the model. This is number two, okay? And then you want to figure out the views, right? You want to figure out the views. Now, of course, you can do views as number two and model as number three. That is something I talked about in one of the previous videos. That is absolutely fine. Then the logic kind of falls into place, right? This depends if you're doing bubble, you're doing app guyver. You want to kind of go in this order, right? The mission statement is always first, followed by the model followed by views that is kind of what you want to be thinking about next let's take a look at this app here this is sparkly spelled kind of uh in a weird way so if we open this app here let's just quickly brainstorm and see exactly what this app does all right so it says here super quick online survey tool got questions why wait so sparkly helps your business increase online sales acquire customers for less save time in meetings okay you know they they have this nice kind of marketing uh information these benefits but at the end of the day it's very very simple you're just creating a question you're sending this question to your customers and as a result you can make informed product decisions and reward customers it's a very 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 simple app it's a very simple idea but it has big business implications okay so what are we thinking about if we go here what is the mission statement the mission statement is customer research in one sentence it's figure out what your customers want that's it that's that's your mission statement how are we going to do that by creating survey by creating questions right so i don't know if it's one question or you can create multiple questions so let's say it's just one question then the question becomes our model right the question becomes our model and as you can see a question can have uh images it can have you know you know it can have maybe text it can have various things here you can sign up you can go to how it works to kind of better understand it but let's say a question is just text and an input field right the text is the label and the input field which is the actual value that the customer uh you know is going to be entering uh, is going to be inputting in there that is it right that is kind of what we have now if you go in here this looks like a dashboard that's going to display all the answers the questions and answers very very simple so what you guys want to do is you have your mission statement right question and answer right you want to learn more about the product that's your mission statement and you know it could be a little bit more than that but the purpose here is you want to get it down to a sentence maximum one sentence you want to explain this mission statement to a five-year-old if you cannot do that if you cannot explain it to a child that means you don't really understand it yourself and you need to kind of go back to the drawing board you need to be able to explain this to a child 
very, very important. The model is, is questions, right? It's a question. The model is a question. Now, this, this question can have multiple fields. It can be text. It could be maybe a paragraph. It doesn't really matter how that question is implemented. But the model is actually, you know, one of the entities in the model is going to be question. Next, we have views. Well, what are the views? Well, if you go back up here, this is a view. Um, this is actually not a view. This is going to be a uh, logic here. And then this is going to be another view. Make informed decision. This is the, the responses here, right? These are going to be the responses. That's it. Very, very simple. You know, like I said, uh, like I've been saying before, this is all very, very simple. Let's do a couple of more apps. And then you guys will understand exactly how the whole thing works and how to do it. Let's think about this app here. All right, so this is what it says. It says actionable team feedback on autopilot. And then it says switch from hours to seconds to understand your crew like never before from home, office, or even the moon, okay? So it's a lot of talk and it actually took me a couple of moments to kind of figure out what exactly this means. Okay, it's a lot of marketing speak and that's nice, but it's not, you know, very, very plain words, okay? Now, if we scroll down, you have this uh, something called pulses. And essentially, these are questions that you ask your team or maybe somebody else inside your team uh, can ask, maybe a bunch of admins. And your team, uh, you know, members on your team, members in your company, in your corporation, in your organization are going to be answering those questions. That way you can kind of understand, uh, you know, the issues in your uh, organization, uh, what people are stressing about, you know, what's going on, what's happening, kind of the pulse, right? This, the situation. Uh, it's kind of like the saying, you want to have your hand on the pulse in kind of a figurative way. And so we have here, what is your stress level? As an example of a question, we have 100 answers, status is ongoing, deadline. Where do you prefer working from? Maybe this is uh, from home, from office. Maybe this is a multiple choice question or a, um, you know, a, a, you can pick a single value like a drop down. And then you have, what would be your dream schedule? Maybe this is a paragraph. So it's very, very similar to kind of this previous app, this quick survey, except this is like a survey for internal, whereas this survey is for external. So here you're doing a survey for um, your, you know, people that, you know, that work for you, right? People in your company, employees, contractors, uh, people like that. Whereas here you're doing it for um, your customers, your clients, uh, things like that. So I don't really think it's necessary to kind of go deeper, uh, you know, than we kind of covered. But just to kind of, you know, go through the motions, right? The mission statement, you know, have your, you know, hand on the pulse uh, of your company or something like that. that. That's kind of the mission statement in a nutshell. Know what's going on inside your business. That's, that's really what it is. The model, question. Question is going to be one entity. You're going to have users. Uh, you're going to have admins as always. But the main one is going to be question or questions. Views. Well, you have your list view here, and then you're going to have your view where they can actually um, maybe create a new question and then answer that question, maybe a couple of more views. And that's it. Very, very simple. So take a look at this one right here. This is a question that um, uh, what would be a dream schedule? There are 78 answers. Tone is optimistic. Sentiment is neutral. So they also talk about that this whole thing is powered by the world's best language, AI. Okay, so they're using some kind of artificial intelligence there. And, you know, you can do that, right? You can do that with Bubble. You can do that with AppGyver by hooking into third-party APIs. How to implement that exactly is kind of beyond the scope of this video. But, you know, it's very, very straightforward once you kind of build this app out. So it says here, what would be a dream schedule? Uh, and then it kind of, you know, it, it gets it together, right? Hybrid work, flexibility, work-life balance. So apparently this kind of AI engine they're using is analyzing all, all of these questions, 78 answers, uh, answers, and it's giving them these topics. It's saying, okay, there are 22 that uh, have something mentioning hybrid work, 16 flexibility, work-life balance. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's a free-form uh, question and so in order to analyze it, you basically have to read through all that and kind of make notes. And you have an AI that kind of looks through the words, uh, tries to figure out patterns. And as a result, it can kind of give you this kind of big picture. And that's awesome. 
Because imagine you don't have 78 answers. You had, you know, 7,000 answers. It's going to take a long time to kind of go through all of them. Whereas here, you can immediately see what's happening, right? And so there it says here, uh, most people say they are more productive in the morning and would prefer this time slot to focus on work. Also, many people would like to have Friday afternoons off to have a better work-life balance, even if it means working earlier during the week. So all this AI stuff is very, very easy to implement. This is not a, a no-code problem. The no-code problem is building this thing without the AI. AI. AI could be plugged in later on. So that's kind of you, how you want to think about it. Bubble supports uh, REST API. It, it supports plugins. AppGyver supports REST API natively. And so you can hook up to all kinds of third-party uh, REST API services that, that give you AI stuff. So that is not something you have to worry about. So it's not really necessary to kind of talk about this too much. And so that is kind of how you build this app. The same way how you build this app, except the UI is a little bit different. The business is very, very different. The way you implement it is not different, but the business is different. Let's analyze one more app, and that way you will have a really, really good idea how to build all kinds of different apps. So I like this app. This is called Yard Guru, and it's instant gardening quotes. And, and right away, like I know exactly what this app does. This is probably the only app that we discussed today that you know plainly explains exactly what it does and who it's for and who it's not for and whether I, I need to kind of you know spend you know 10 minutes understanding their landing page or I can immediately understand what's happening and I can go from there. So it says here, compare quotes and save on loan mowing. Okay, so I don't have a house. This is probably not a service for me, but it could be a service for somebody else. So it says here, why use Yard Guru? Get upfront pricing, get your final price before you book. And then it says, we are Australian. We're helping Aussie businesses. So this means that if you're not in Australia, this app is not going to be for you. Right away, they're they making a statement. That's very important, right? Because this is not an online business. This is not a worldwide app. This is a local a local geographical type of um, app. So if you're not in Australia, you have no business, um, you know, even reading further, right? I'm not in Australia, so this app is not for me. Right away, I know this. And then book anywhere, anytime, book 24-7 online, fast, simple, and easy. So this is pretty much applicable to just about every app on the internet. But it's good they put it there because they kind of need to fill their page somehow. Testimonials, stuff like that. So here you can say, get a quote. And it wants me to enter uh, my email address. I'm not going to do that because I already understand how it works, right? I'm going to enter my email. I'm going to, you know, uh, maybe enter the kind of work I need to be done. And then, uh, you know, all these uh, people on the other side, the contractors, the workers, uh, they're going to take a look at my quote and maybe they're going to bid on the quote. That's kind of the idea. I'm not going to go through the process because it's kind of self-explanatory. So if we go back here, the mission statement, find... Uh, you know, get somebody to do your lawn or, you know, fix your lawn. That's it. Uh, get quality people to do your lawn. That's it. The model, quote, right? The entity, one of the entities is going to be quote because this whole system is built around quotes. I enter a type of work. I may enter my budget and that's a quote, right? I'm sending a proposal, right? And the people on the other side, the, the labor providers, the, the contractors, the, um, the actual people that are going to be working on my loan, they may accept or ignore or reject my quote, or maybe they can do a counter offer. So let's say I want somebody to do my loan for 30 bucks. And they're like, well, that's a little bit too much. How about 25 bucks? And I, maybe I, I, have a, I have an opportunity to accept that counter offer. Or I can just deny that counter offer, and that's kind of how it would work. If I, you know, if I had to design it, which is probably how this whole thing works, if I had to guess. And so, if you go back here, we have the mission statement, we have the model, the main entity, the key entity is going to be quote or quotes for plural, and then we have views, right? So you're gonna have your dashboard, your user dashboard, meaning somebody like me, a customer, a customer dashboard where I'm gonna see various quotes for various jobs that I'm asking people. And we're going to have a list, right? So for instance, the, the laborers, the people on the other side, they're going to have, they're going to see a list of different um, quotes and they can bid on quote or accept a quote or offer a counter offer. 
uh, submit a counter offer, that kind of thing. And I will see, you know, the result. I will say, well, I have I have this proposal, and th there's this counter offer. So you're gonna have views on both sides. You're gonna have a, a customer dashboard and a uh, you know contractor dashboard, and that's it. You know, you're gonna have kind of two main views and a bunch of other auxiliary views as well. Things like forget password, you know, create an account, um, you know, a, a lot of these you know random views that are not that important. Um, well. Forget password is important, but the other views beside the two dashboards are probably not going to be super important for this version right here. And that is kind of how you do it, right? It's a two-way system. It's a two-way market. Whereas, you know, I am basically submitting a custom quote. I'm saying I need this. And then they go out and they get back to me. And if they like the price, they can accept it. Or they can, you know, send me a counter offer with a, a different price. Like if I'm asking for like, I'm willing to pay... Uh, you know, let's say I'm willing to pay $100 and they're like, well, how about $125, something like that. So that's kind of, you know, how, how it would work, right? Maybe my quote is too low and they're not willing to do it for 100 bucks. They want to do it for $150 you know, or $140. So they're going to send me a counter offer. So the main business objective here is to connect buyers and sellers, buyers like me, like a customer like me with sellers that are actually providing these services, the service providers, if you will. And that is how you do it. And that is how you build all of these apps. Very, very simple. Of course, once you start building it, you'll, you'll have to do a lot of other things. You'll have to make various uh, business decisions. You'll also have to work, uh, make various design decisions, how to design it correctly. But talking about all that and in building these apps is kind of like beyond the scope of this video. I just want to give you a general overview of how you would go about actually designing these apps and architecting them from the ground up. All right, guys. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or concerns or you need me to clarify something. Maybe you didn't understand something. You need me kind of talk, talk about it uh, further, elaborate on something, if you will. I would definitely love to hear. If you enjoy this video, definitely give this video a fat like. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more no-code content, and I will talk to you guys real, real soon.